Hi, Peter Charles here, Hooked for Life, fly fishing. And today let's talk about fishing in dirty or heavily stained water. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like fishing it, and it's not the nicest, we get that. But, you know, if you've gone out on a, an ex, you know, a paid for a destination trip, or you've driven like I've done an hour and a half to get to the river and find out it's mud, you've got to make the best of it. And so we're talking about how to make the best of it, and I will say one thing. We may not like dirty water, but if you ever ask the fish, they don't have to worry about predators nearly as much because predators can't see them. Prey items can't see them. The flow of the water is bringing a smorgasbord towards them. They're chowing down in dirty water. So let's not worry about that too much. It's not about us not liking the dirty water. It's about the fish loving it. So let's, you know, Take advantage of the situation here and, and work with it. But there are some considerations. If you're going to fish streamers in dirty water, you have to sort of change your approach a little bit. Uh, first off, before we get into this, I'd like to talk about this book for a moment called What Fish See. Uh, I don't know if it's still in print, but if you can get a used copy, get one. It talks about the frequencies of light that fish can see, how various frequencies penetrate into the water, what colors work, show up the best in clear water, green water, blue water, dirty water. It goes through a, a quite a list of uh, situations uh, and the types of colors we might want to use on our flies. Now, uh, we're not saying that if you're using like the wrong color, you're not going to catch a fish. Of course you'll catch a fish, but your odds are improved by, you know, using a color that the fish can see in those conditions. So, when you're, if you want to get into that depth, yeah, that's a good choice. Get into that. See if you can find a copy of that book. Other than that, what are we going to do when the water's off color and we arrive at the river and it looks, you know, awful? Well, I want to relate a couple of things from my own experience. Uh, there's one section of the river that's an hour and a half drive from my house. And I look at the, the gauge and it, it, the flow rate was a bit up, but didn't look too bad. And, um, you know, there's no turbidity gauge, so I couldn't tell what the color was like. So I was going to do a video on a, a new rod, a G. Loomis NRX uh, Euro Nymphing 10 foot 4 weight. I got up there and it is awful. It's chocolate milk. And you got about that much visibility. And, I'm, and, and it's September, which means the fish are under micro patterns. And it's one fly water, so you can't use a team of flies. Oh, great. I'm up here. Got my video gear here. Might as well make the best of it. I got three fish on camera. All right. And I'm just using a size 22 caddis in mu almost mud. So the, f the ability of the fish to pick up prey items in those conditions should not be underestimated. They can see and detect prey in that water way better than we can see them. So... Don't underestimate that. If in those conditions, if I could pick up three fish on a size 22 micro caddis, you know, you've got really good shot with a streamer that big that they'll see it. So, yeah, there's some color choices. I mean, I've done really well fishing, you know, the brown trout weamer. I know I talk about it all the time. High up in the water column in dirty conditions. It's white. It shows well against the sky. And I've done very well fishing this, and I've fished it in Caledonia when the water's been awful. And I've got pictures of me catching fish where, like, the water visibility is about this much on this pattern, fished high. Okay? You might want to use something like this, you know, a fly like that. It's going to work really, really well. Fish low. It's dark. It shows up well. Solid silhouette, you know, or, you know. Get into, get this one out here, get into black, you know, that really, something like that. Lots of choice, lots of things you can do to try and get fish in dirty conditions. And I will say one thing, you think you need to be large and that doesn't hurt, but I've also caught steelhead on really small patterns in dirty water, like size 10 wet flies, you know, soft tackles, stuff like that. And I've hooked fish in it. So, 
they'll hit even small stuff in dirty water. We're thinking in terms of ourselves, what do we need to see under the water if we were down there with scuba gear? You know, what will we need to see? And you need a big fly to see it. I don't think that's true with fish. They, they do a lot better job under the water seeing what's going on and feeling what's going on with the lateral line than we do, you know, when we're underwater with the mask and the scuba tank. So uh, I wouldn't, you know, always follow our human perceptions in making judgment on what the fish can detect and what the fish will feed on. They feed on small stuff. Remember, size 22 caddis in chocolate milk, and I'm catching fish on it, okay? So they can see this stuff. Don't worry about it. So how would you approach it? Well, it's relatively straightforward. Yes, I've caught fish in dirty conditions high up, but I would call that, you know, a, a lower probability method. I had a, a fellow out uh, on a guided trip and again, it's one of those things where the flow rate didn't look bad on the gauge, but when I got out there, it was muddy. All he had was a floating line. We did our damnedest, but he didn't get a single fish all day. And I know the fish were there, but they were the bass were not coming up for anything that was high up. It had to be down in, the, in, in their face. Uh, what can you do? He didn't have the gear with him to do it. And I couldn't give him any of my gear because he'd never fished a sinking line before. He spent a day being frustrated. So... You know, you do have to get the fly down further when it's dirty to improve your odds. And that's what we're talking about, improving odds. Because, yes, I count fish high up in dirty water. Uh, but reality is you've got to get the, fish, the fly down, sorry, to the fish. So what I normally try to do is low, slow, broadside. That's my presentation method. Get it down, slow it down, present the fly sideways. So the fish, it goes across the fish's face or maybe up here. And they get a good profile look at the fly. It's better up here because it's now silhouetted against the sky, especially if you're using something like this thing. And it's up here under the fish. And they look up and they can see the silhouette of that thing. Yeah, that'll work. So when you're trying to catch fish in dirty conditions, low, slow, broadside and you've got a really good chance of getting some fish. So next time you go to the river and it looks awful, don't allow your human perceptions to go, oh, that's awful, the fish must be thinking it's terrible and hunkered on the bottom, oh my lord, it's terrible. No, they're putting on the feed bag. This is great conditions for them. Lots of prey being washed down to them, not worried about predators, and they can move around as much as they want. So next time you get to the river and it's not the way you would like, you know, low, slow, broadside, and catch lots. Cheers.